everyone, welcome back to Yellow Cottage Soapery. I am restocking Coastal Shores today, but I've only made it one other time and I did like orange shells and everything on top. This one's going to be completely different colors. I have a bazillion shells in yellow, like a pretty green, and then this aqua. And I put them in a bag with a little bit of sparkle mica. So they, I don't know if the camera shows, but they kind of sparkle. They're really pretty. And I also have some small ones, but I'm using those for a different soap. Um, the fragrance says that it is a tropical delight that combines sweet coconut and juicy island fruits with exotic and delightfully fragrant native flora and plumeria flowers. So I'm going to use the same colors that you saw with the shells. I also, um, I'm going to do a little bit that looks like sand. So I have some poppy seeds to put in that. And I think that's it. I'm just going to have a white base and do a swirl. Um, I do have three soaps planned using these colors. One is for one of the shops here. Two of them actually. Sea glass and this one. I will have about eight bars available.
going to texture this a little bit. I had to let it set up. And then I'm going to place my shells in it. I definitely didn't get a good color for sand. And it was one that I thought, no matter what I added to it, it wasn't going to fix it. So... I just went with it, and then I thought if I added the white on the top, it might make it look not so pinky. There is sand, this kind, this sort of this color. Um, my husband and I have been watching um, the Planet Earth series. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. Uh, this is Planet Earth 2, and... It should, you know, it talks about animals in mountains and in the cities and just like what they face and with food and weather and water. And we've just been loving this series. It's just very interesting. And so many different animals and species that I had never even heard of. My favorite are watching the birds and how they... Um, make their noises for mating calls and like fluff their feathers and just and also the monkeys they're my favorite okay so I could go on and on with this but I think I'm just going to call it good and place the shells to go ahead and cut coastal shores there's the inside and the top I'm gonna to cut it on its side just it seems to be easier with the embeds but let me show you a couple of the first of the end loaf that I caught <clears throat> excuse me I thought the swirls turned out really pretty so I want to see what the middle looks like Ooh, lots of swirls. The sand has like a pinky tint to it. It's kind of pretty. I think today is the last day using this table because my stainless steel table came today. And I'm hoping to get it put together this afternoon. Um, I may make one more soap on this table. I have to make sea glass today. love this swirl. You can see a little bit of the poppy seeds. Ooh. Um, I love telling you guys uh, stories of our backyard and the ducks and the geese and everything. Well, I think I mentioned in another video, there's a house next door that has a screen porch. And a goose made her little nest right next to it. So I would always go out and check, and it takes like 30 days for the eggs to hatch. And during the time, I think a week or two ago, the homeowner decided to put up this little fence around his yard. And I don't know, I did some reading about it because what happened was we were outside and 
the mother the mother was inside the fence and the little babies had gone through the fence and were standing there with their dad, I guess is who he is. And the mother couldn't get out. And I'm like, why can't she just fly out? And she was sticking her neck in the fence and kind of trying to get her body through. And I'm like, she's going to break her neck. I mean, she was like fiercely trying to get out to out of there. So I, I was reading, I quick looked it up. And when they uh, start having um, or hatching eggs, when the eggs hatch, they or when they're sitting on them, I believe, they start losing their feathers, their flying feathers. They molt, and then the new feathers come in. So it said the whole family cannot fly during that time, and it happens from, like, April, April till July, and then they get their... So right now, this particular goose couldn't fly to get out, and she couldn't fit through the fence. So I'm like, we got to do something. So I went over and opened the gate to the fence and when I walked by the male with the babies he like made his hissing noise a little bit but you know he I was really close I took a really close picture of the babies they had just hatched so the kids next to that house they said put something in front of this gate you know leave it open so she can get out well even though we did that she was like try, still trying to get out you know sticking her head in there and everything so I mean, we got to do something, and Mark's like, oh, you just got to let nature take its course and all that. I said, no, you know, she could have been trapped in here ever since they did the fence. Ooh, look at that swirl. And if that's the case, she hasn't eaten or had anything to drink or whatever in uh, over a week. So I kind of sh kept walking and shooed the male into the fence, thinking he would show her the way out. Well, no, they get in there, and he stays in there, and they're all, like, fiercely trying to get out with the little ducks were, like, laying laying there. It's like they, I don't know if they have to get in the water soon after they're born or what. So I went and got breadcrumbs and kind of left a trail out so they could get out. I'll cut my samples while I'm talking. Um... And the male started, do, you know, eating it, and she was kind of following them. It was really slow, and they just didn't get out. So I said, okay, you know, I'm going to check on them in a little while. Well, they got out and were in the water. So I don't know what would have happened to that mother duck if she couldn't have got out of that. And I don't. I think the homeowner might be on vacation, you know. So we did that. I just felt like. Oh my gosh, this poor mother, you know. And they were hissing at us, but at the same time, you know, I got so close to the babies and the male, you know, you would think would attack because you're so close to his babies. But, um, no, it was almost, and it was funny, we were sitting on the back patio and all of a sudden we just looked over and saw him looking at us. And I looked at him and he started making noises, just looking at me. And it was like, I said to Mark, I think he was asking for help. And we went over there, and he let me walk, like, right next to the babies. And that's the closest I've ever got. And it was almost like he was asking us to help her out. It was so sweet. So, end story is that the geese are great. They're out. And we have another nest, um, a duck laid a nest of six eggs right in our mulch next to the house. So, um, they're, they were just laid a few days ago, so they won't be ready for about 30 days. So... I will keep you updated on that. Thank you guys for watching. See you next time.